Well, hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I have a brand new PAP, PAP paramotor right there. I cannot pronounce the name, here's the spelling. It is the XL cage, so it's the larger cage spinning a 140 prop. In today's paramotor world, a 140 is becoming more and more the standard, and this is living up to it. Today I'm gonna take it out, I'm gonna weigh it before I put any fuel in it, and then I'm gonna start it, I'm gonna go fly it. The weather this afternoon, morning time, it's about 11 o'clock in the morning, is as picture perfect as it gets. Now, let's get started with this PAP overview. Right off the bat, I'm gonna say, this is one of the easier paramotors to actually transport, at least for me, in the bed of the truck. Sometimes paramotors don't have a great spot to actually hook a ratchet strap. The PAP does. I found it to be very easy to transport. Okay guys, so like you saw there in that clip, it's actually the easiest gas tank behind the flat top paramotor that I have ever filled. Gas cap is easy to reach and you don't have to bend the nozzle of the fuel can in a weird way to get to it. Let's do a little walk around of this PAP before we fire it up and take it for its first flight. Okay, so right off the bat looking at this PAP paramotor, the first thing I wanna mention is that this is a titanium paramotor. This is a very nicely welded titanium cage that I have to say is probably one of the nicest looking cages and frames I've ever seen. You can see these titanium welds here are just super, super nice. I'm sure I'll show some pictures here in a second. But overall, the fit and finish, as you could say, was extremely impressive to me. I know most paramotors in modern day time are well made, but I have to say this is probably one of the most well made, well thought out motors I have seen. Now, aesthetics is something that is personal, but I think the paramotor looks really nice. I kind of like this netting. I think it looks very good. And the thing that's surprising about it is how tight this netting is. It's actually pretty tight netting. Some nettings you get and it's nice and slack and you can kind of press on. This netting is not. I do also like the additional uh, feature of being able to tighten down the netting. As you can see here, there's this clip that you can pull on that adds some extra tension to this netting. I have found this to be super nice. Now, the thing with the PAP that's probably most notable, at least this PAP in particular, is how easily it can be taken apart and how easily it can be put together. I will show a clip here near the end of the video of me actually taking it all apart and putting it back together. It's probably the easiest assembling paramotor I have ever used. I would say PAP is number one, flat top is number two, and Kangook is number three. Pat probably wins by quite a margin. Okay guys, it is future me here. I'm not sure where this is gonna fall into the video, but I did wanna take apart the PAP and put it back together for you live on video so that you can watch it and time it and see for yourself how long it takes to put this thing together. So let's add that into the video now. And that is taken apart. Let's put it back together.
done. That right there is how long it takes you to take apart the pap and put the pap back together. And by the way, that was the second time I've ever put it together and the first time I've ever taken it apart. Now, next thing I would like to talk about that we briefly touched on is this fuel tank. It is very nice to get to this fuel cap. And although this bar is kind of close, if I come from the back side over here, it's very easy to undo this. Obviously, I would personally move myself over here. As you can see, gas cap's easy to get off and gas cap's easy to get on. Boom, just like that. Fuel nose comes through here, just like you saw, and fills this gas tank. Now, I know there's two different gas tank options, or at least I believe there are two different gas tank options. I'm a big fan of big fuel tanks because I fly longer distances, and that I quite like. Now, one thing that's important to me with a paramotor is, you could say, the prop to netting and prop to cage clearance. As you can say, see up here, there's actually a fair bit of clearance and it's pretty strong like that's me squeezing as hard as I could now we roll down here to the side it's pretty good clearance with a fairly strong cage I actually can't get them to touch without uncomfortably pressing on that prop some cages you are able to flex together this one I'm sure I could get to touch but I find that to be quite difficult now that I would say the cage is quite strong I don't have much uh, data you could say to pull from other than just first impressions on the ground, but that's so far how I'm seeing it. Now, the mainframe itself, I have heard to be very, very strong. I personally can't say I'm a huge fan of the fact that this cage doesn't kind of curl. I like skids that curve backwards, and I'm unsure how I feel so far about this mainframe. It looks like something that could get bent up and have to be replaced but that is a to be determined as time kind of goes on. Overall cage impressed with netting. I'm also fairly impressed with, let me see if I can try and flex netting and cage together here for you. It's uh, the two are not coming together. This netting is probably one of the more impressive strengths and tightness I have seen. There are some noticeable gaps as you can see here uh, that maybe I'm not the biggest fan of but that's besides the point. Now, let's move forward to the swing arms and talk about those. I'm a big fan of actually being able to see the swing arm bolt here and pre-flight the, pre the swing arm bolt. I can actually get in there, tighten it, loosen it, double check it every single flight, and that is something I quite like. These swing arms are a bit of a unique design that PAP does, and are a lower swing arm with a bit of a higher carabiner. I believe these are called a low hook-in point paramotor. I could be mistaken on that. Um, but that's what I see now. I like the little bit of adjustability here with the end of the swing arm as you can see right here you Can actually shift that forward and down or up and there's quite a bit of adjustment on the swing arm Bonus to pap. They sent a nice manual that told me exactly where to put this for my weight Not every paramotor does that Now as far as I'm concerned this harness and we'll get to the throttle here in just a second As far as I know this harness is a pap specific made by sup air and I gotta say, I'm quite impressed with all the padding. There are a lot of buckles on this harness, and I can't say that these buckles would be easy to undo in the case of a water landing. These buckles are a little bit smaller. Let's see if I can get this together with one hand. Bad lighting. But the little buttons here and here on the side that you actually press to release the buckle, I could see being difficult to press in a moment of need, right? In a moment where you land in the water, it could be difficult to do. It does have this nifty, um, I believe it's called torque compensation strap right here that connects to the side. That helps kind of pull you to this side compensating for the torque. This and this are also to do that. Same with that there. There is built-in compensation as well as that strap. Now, one bonus thing with this harness that I see so far is the big old airbag underneath. This right here is something that I'm actually very excited about and I think all paramotors should eventually adapt. This is just that one layer of if you screw up or have a bad butt landing, this is gonna kind of soak stuff up for you. Every paragliding harness, excluding very lightweight hike and fly harnesses and split leg harnesses, have airbags. Most every harness has an airbag now, and I think it's something that more paramotors should adopt into their harnesses, or at least offer. If it was offered on every paramotor, I probably would accept it. My opinion is TBD, to be determined as time goes on, but that's my initial reactions. 
I like these pockets. There is a pocket on both sides. I have the reserve container. I'm not entirely sure where the reserve container is supposed to mount. I'm sure I can figure that out, and it might be that I remove one of these pockets. Did come with the speed bar pulleys right here and right there, so I'm very excited to install that at some point and take this out for some more flying. Again, I'm gonna make a clip or have another video at the end after I fly it of me taking it apart and putting it together. That's probably the biggest pro to the PAP. I will say this mounting plate on the PAP is built to accept most any major engine, so if you wanna replace the power plant and change it to something else, that you don't have to change the main frame. That is quite nice. Starter looks easily accessible, and I gotta say they did a very neat job at organizing everything. Throttle, fuel, and spark. Everything looks very nicely put together. That right is right off the bat my first impressions. I do kind of like this strap here. I think this cord that goes up to the handle could be annoying, but that is designed to keep it from flying back into the prop, which I give it bonus points for. I've heard stories. I've never personally experienced it, but I am always here for things like that. Now, one last thing before we wrap this up and actually go fly it is this throttle. This throttle to me is something that I could like. Right off the bat, I can't say I'm a big fan, but that's probably because I'm a huge fan of the off-grid aviation throttle. This to me sounds like a fourth uh, finger throttle, which you use with three fingers on brake, kind of all four on the throttle, kill switch on top, does have a cruise control, that's this little dial here. So far, not the biggest fan of it, but I have yet to fly it, so my opinion is based only on looking at it. The strap on top is nice and can be adjusted. I am, however, a big fan of off-grid and maybe a little bit biased because that's the throttle that I would prefer. This is currently set up for a right-hand throttle. I normally fly a left-hand throttle, so this will take a little getting used to, but nothing I'm not willing to try. That's my first impressions of the Pat Paramotor. Let's go get it started and take it out for its maiden flight. Okay, guys, this is gonna be the first time I put the pap on and we're gonna try and get it started uh, it's never been started and carbs usually need a little bit of tweaking here in Utah to actually get fired up and going nice primer ball positioning easy to get to and the uh, button on the carburetor that you press to allow fuel into the carburetor also easy to get to that's not always the case on every paramotor here's my first impressions ever putting on a pap paramotor let's see how it feels oh yeah get those straps all strapped down it feels good I'm sure I could use a little bit more adjusting right now it feels like it's hanging a little low so let's tighten those a little bit I think this airbag is kind of sort of in the way of my legs I don't think that'll affect the way I can run but it is something I'm noticing I will tell you there are a lot more buckles than I'm used to I normally fly a Dudek Comfort seat harness or a Dudek Comfort light seat harness. So this harness is just gonna take me a little bit of getting used to. Okay, there's the harness all buckled up. One thing that I do notice about this harness that's different than like the Dudek Comfort is that there's a strap right here that comes from one of the leg straps up. Meaning if you don't buckle your leg straps, but you do buckle this chest strap, which you need this strap for, you won't just fall out. Make sure you always buckle your leg straps, ladies and gentlemen. Easy to reach strap, I like that. Of course, you can follow the little bungee all the way up to it, which is kind of nice. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get this brand new motor started. Now, Viterazzi has a broken down system for how you should break in their motor. Uh, I typically don't follow it to a T, I'm terrible, but I do try and at least go through one cycle, which here's the cycle, here's kind of the breakdown of one cycle. I try and do that, let the motor cool, then fly it. And I personally fly it for five hours very calmly. I try to take it easy, I try to be gentle, no aggressive flying till after five hours but I don't personally sit on the ground for five hours trying to break in a motor. She runs good. Okay guys, well, normally when I first take off, the whole goal is to just kind of sort of get a feel for things. And that's what I'm really trying to do. 
Got myself kind of situated. Right off the bat, Pap's feeling nice and comfy. You know, I'm not picking up on too much vibration. I'd say it feels very similar to like a Parajet Maverick in that sense, that there's not a lot of vibration. Weight shift feels good. I, I don't feel squished in the paramotor, which I like. And I could definitely tell, sorry 360 cam, that I can like shake and bake in this bad boy nicely. I'm quite enjoying it. The hang points are a little bit lower than something like the Kangoo, which I recently spent some time on. I definitely noticed that just because the brake range to get the same effect that I'm used to, I have to pull a little bit more. We're definitely rocking some midday thermally action over here. We're gonna do a little full throttle climb here, see how she feels. I think I screwed up my hang angle just a little bit. I think I'm leaning a little far forward. The cage isn't touching the lines, so that's good. I don't experience a lot of torques here, so the compensation is pretty good. It's flying decently straight. I have a little bit of left brake on. Just climbing good. I don't wanna I don't wanna spend too much time at full throttle on a brand new engine. Really enjoying having that 140 motor. I, uh, like I mentioned earlier in this video, I think it's everything's kind of gravitating towards that 140. I think that's going to be the new wave moving forward. That's going to be the new standard. It makes sense for most people if you're over like 170 pounds and or you fly at elevation. A 140 prop is just kind of a no-brainer. This is nice. I'm actually quite digging this. Oh yeah. This feels good, dude. This is very natural. Sometimes you have to fight against the paramotor to get it to do things. Not this, this feels good. And that larger gas tank means that, hypothetically, it could be a great cross country motor. I mean, I'm spinning a 140 prop, which is gonna be a little bit more efficient. I've got the larger fuel tank, which is gonna give me a little bit more range, which is really nice. I'm a big fan of this airbag. I don't think I'm noticing it, although I'm sure if I did a big cross country flight, I would notice a difference in economy with that uh, airbag, because I imagine the airbag reduces your fuel efficiency by just a little bit. Still taking me a while to get used to that throttle, but I'm definitely digging this. I know this cage can come in a smaller version to spin a 125 or 130 and a larger vision version to spin a 140 prop. Uh, the normal cage and the XL cage. I believe the normal cage costs this. I'll put it right there. And I want to say that's 7850 or something. And the XL cage is like 8000 Again, I'll correct that with uh, text over this if that was incorrect. I think PAP is probably a little underpriced to tell you to tell you the truth. Based on everything that I've seen so far, I've been super impressed with it. Okay guys, that concludes my first flight with the PAP. I flew for just over an hour and in that hour, I feel I got a good first impressions on this paramotor. Right off the bat, I wanna mention the two things that maybe I struggled with that I believe are all pilot error and something that won't be an issue moving forward. The first one was getting into the seat on launch. I think that was a mistake that I was causing and I think if I go fly again, that it won't really be an issue. But I did struggle to slip into the seat on the first launch with this paramotor. And the second thing is getting out of the seat felt slightly uncomfortable. I was leaned back farther than I'm used to and I think it's because of the airbag underneath the harness. It gave me a similar feeling to landing a scout where you have more of a reclined position. I don't think it's that big of a deal. It's definitely something I will get used to, and I'm willing to sacrifice that for the airbag underneath, which I think is a big safety feature, and I'm actually a big fan of. Now, off the first impression, I was trying to take it very easy on the engine, so I didn't do anything aggressive. 
I did not love the throttle. That is a personal preference. I'm gonna exchange that throttle for an off-grid aviation throttle. I also didn't like that it was in my right hand, so I wasn't fully comfortable. I couldn't get in the groove, you could say. I was just trying to work with what I had. Wingovers felt super easy. Weight shift was nice. Everything felt nice. It was comfortable. I didn't get a lot of rocking back and forth like this on and off power, which is something you can experience with lower hang points. Uh, like the pop is one little thing that I really appreciated is that I could look straight up at the wing without catching my head on anything this section right behind the pilot that's big and open although yes is a gap in the netting it's very nice to allow your head to look up without bumping into anything or catching on anything I have a bunch of stuff on the back of my helmet and that can sometimes catch in netting and stuff like that and it's not a problem with this paramotor so that was a big win i was super happy about that i think this paramotor exceeded my expectations i expected to like it and i expected to have a good time on it and i'm very excited to fly it again in fact it's the one that i'm looking forward to flying out of all five of the paramotors that i have any of which that i could fly